Hey everybody, I'm here with Jess Fadel to do our second staff core interview while we're all at home stuck in quarantine. I'm doing interviews with our staff so y'all can have a chance to hear from and see the people that keep key parts of the Kirk running like a well-oiled machine. Uh, some of you may not know Jess, she works largely behind the scenes as our communications coordinator, but though you may not see Jess, you have all certainly seen her good work. Uh, Jess handles just about everything we put online or in print um, from our weekly online newsletters and the bulletins that come out every Sunday uh, to our social media and our website management to the sermon artwork that goes with each of our sermon series and some of the videos we produce. Uh, basically, Jess is a whiz with understanding how people receive information and especially with thinking about uh, the graphic design and the layout. She takes everything we do and figures out how to add a, a quality of interest and of beauty to it. So today I wanted to bring Jess to the forefront because in this time when the vast majority of our ministry has shifted online, Jess's work has become more vital than ever to all of us. So Jess, glad to be talking to you. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Um, first, I need to point out that we have kind of a, a charming tradition in these core interviews where we wear hats to do them, and it's, it's actually a long-standing tradition. It dates all the way back to my previous interview with Abby Karsten. But as it turns out, you don't own a single hat, is that right? I don't. I, yeah, I've, I think I admire hat wearers, but I, don't, I feel like I don't fit into the category of being a hat wearer. Well, I, I appreciate the admiration as a yeah. hat wearer. Um, but that's an interesting thing to know about you. We'd love to know more about you. Can you just start by telling us um, a little about your, a little bit about your family? Introduce us to the Fatals. Yeah. Um, so my husband and I actually met in sixth grade. So we have known each other a long time. And a fun fact about us is that we were actually both born in Scranton, Pennsylvania. So if you're a fan of The Office. Yes. Um, yeah, that's the home of home of the office. And so we were actually both born there and then our families didn't know each other, but we both separately ended up in Colorado and at the same church. And so that's where we met. And um, then in high school, we started dating and we dated all throughout high school and college and then um, got married. And uh, we lived in Wyoming for five years. Uh, my husband was a pastor of worship and youth at a church there, and um, then after that, we ended up in St. Louis. So I was going to ask, what brought you to St. Louis? Yeah, so we had been looking at, we had been interested in going to seminary for a while, um, and Covenant was high on that list, um, and we had felt that the Lord was leading us away from the church in Wyoming for a little bit. And so we started to think about that again. And, um, so as we were looking, I found the job at the Kirk and it just like all the pieces just started to align. And so we were like, yeah, let's go for it. So we kind of moved here without knowing anyone really without, I had never been here before. Eric had visited Covenant once. Um, really briefly but yeah kind of sight unseen we just up and left and we were so glad we did <laughs> i still remember the day we we put the job description together for what you do and we we looked at it and we thought well this is great except we'll never find anybody who can do all these different things and then one day david klotz came into my office and said we got one applicant and i said great tell me about this person he said well she lives in wyoming <laughs> but, oh, they're, they're, it's not going to work. Does she know we need her to be in St. Louis? And he said, no, get this. They're coming to Covenant Seminary. So uh, it's, it's just worked out so wonderfully. And we're, we're glad to have you. How is seminary going for you and Eric? Yeah, it's been, it's been really great. We, you know, we had kind of come out of a hard situation with our previous church. And so one thing we were really looking forward to is having a season of rest and healing and um, just kind of recovering um, just a, a new sense of love for the Lord and love for the church. Um, 
I think we felt, uh, yeah, just a heaviness. And so a big part of coming to Covenant has been um, that they have treated us as whole people, um, that they care about our hearts, they care about, um, you know, our emotional health, as well as training us and equipping us um, in, in such great ways. So it's been just a really healing thing for us. Um, <clears throat> and we've just learned a lot, um, how to care well for people, um, and just seeing the breadth and, um, bigness of God's grace and love through, through the gospel. I love hearing that. I'm glad to hear it. That was, that was very similar to our experience for Anna and I at Covenant Seminary. It's such a wonderful place. I'm glad you guys are there. And you're both doing degrees, right? Did you mention that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So Eric's doing the MDiv um, and I'm doing the MATS, which is the Master's in Theological Studies. Nice. So um, yeah, it's great. So let's talk uh, coronavirus and how we're all surviving. What kinds of uh, goofy, funny, creative things are you and Eric doing right now to spend the time? Yeah, we, uh, well, we have like, part of our, part of the reason we started dating was because of our humor. So um, I was trying to think of if we have done anything out of the ordinary that's, <laughs> that's weird or funny, but um, I've been baking a lot. <laughs> that's like, I've been, I call it stress baking. Um, I don't feel super stressed, but it is like, it, it is like very, like, it's a release for me. Like, I, it's something I really enjoy and I like to share that with other people as I can. So I've made like a lot of things that normally I can't do because it's like a three day process or there's like a lot of steps that are involved that I normally couldn't be tending to it during the day. So I've made like breads, croissants, um, some cakes, <laughs> trying to think what else, pizza doughs, things like that. So it's been really fun. I've been enjoying that. Um, just kind of like a slower pace in, in, the, in the baking sense. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else out of the ordinary. Not really. <laughs> well, that, you know, you're always generous to bring your baking into the office. And now I'm feeling even worse about this day at home <laughs> order, knowing what we're missing out on in the office. Yeah, but, I know. Well, so during normal circumstances, when we're not having a global pandemic, what do you and Eric like to do for fun? What are your hobbies? Is it similar? Yeah, we, we enjoy getting together with people. Um, often having them in our home is something we really enjoy, just having conversation. And um, we enjoy playing games. Um, movies watching movies we also enjoy like going to forest park or going to the um we like going to the zoo and just walking around um and i like one of my hobbies is photography so especially now i've been just having the opportunity to like take a break during the middle of the day and go on a walk and i'll take my camera with me and take mm -hmm. pictures of all the flowers that are blooming and so it's just kind of a really um uh, a really like slowed down experience of being able to take a breath and mm -hmm. <laughs> just enjoy the beautiful creation that's that's outside yeah especially this time of year it's mm -hmm. it's been real nice uh, these last few weeks so let me let's talk about work for a second and let me ask you kind of a philosophical question about what you do and what you're good at why is good communication important how, how does what you do aid the mission of the church would you say yeah it's a it's a good question i i've thought about this a lot in the respect of how god has first communicated to us and so in return we then image him in how we communicate to others mm -hmm. um and so i think like a big part of that is is one that he communicates to us through his words um, but then two he also communicates to us to us visually and we see that like both of those things especially in creation it's one of the things that i a lot of the time go back to when i'm thinking about 
why, like how I can do what I do. Um, I often have thought to myself, you know, like I can communicate so much to a certain degree, but even my words and, and the colors I choose and the, the way that I'm inspired is first and foremost from a God who is that way. Hmm. Um, so that's, that's kind of how I view it is that we think we acknowledge and we recognize that communication is important and that um, we then mimic that because God has done that first to us. You know, I, I feel that way because I'm so aware sometimes that my particular role as a pastor involves communication that essentially um, amounts to um, pages on, you know, words on a page. And to be able to write whatever I'm trying to say and then send it to you and know that you'll add some kind of a, um, a design element to it actually makes it a more robust and, and I think even more meaningful piece of communication. So I love that we get to work together and I'm so appreciative of uh, your skill set and, and the way that our skill sets uh, complement each other. Um, one last question, and this is kind of in a different direction again, but we've been talking. Can you tell us about your brother and his wife, your sister-in-law? She's a physician's assistant, but where do they live and where is she now? What's going on with that? Yeah, so my brother and sister-in-law, they have been, my brother is in the army. So he has kind of been um, in Afghanistan. He's been in Poland over the past couple of years on deployments and she has been going to PA school. And so they've been kind of separated here and there as he comes home, they're together, but they just got the opportunity after she finished PA school in December to finally be together, live in the same house and move to Seattle. Um, and like literally a couple weeks after they got there and she was supposed to start this new job, um, she was asked to go to um, Elmhurst Hospital in Queens, New York. And so she this jumped on a- Recently. Yeah, this was last Saturday. Wow. Um, so they told her on, they asked her on Saturday and they said, can you be on a plane tomorrow, Sunday? And so she said, yes, she got on a plane, flew out there, really didn't know anything of what was going to happen. Um, so she was put on a team of, uh, 10 other people and she's working in the ER right now wow. and she's doing the night shifts, um, so she, we've kind of been in communication. We have like a family group chat. Um, so she's been able to talk with us at least once a day. Just kind of give us an update. Um, so she's, she's in the ER. She said like the biggest thing is that they just don't have enough room for everyone. Um, so she just said it's just really sobering and and kind of devastating just to be there and see those bodies and see those people firsthand and know, you know, I want to try to care for you as best I can, but I'm so limited in, in my resources. Wow. Well, um, in talking, I think we're going to try to see if we can do something to help get some resources to her. We're going to include some information in the uh, newsletter that will go out, which you will send out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but we're going to be praying for her. Her name is Jenna. Jenna, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, and your brother as well. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just uh, what we're going through right now is, is surreal. And to have a firsthand connection to it through you and your sister-in-law brings it into uh, reality for us all the more. So thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you for letting us uh, pray for her and maybe even yeah. be able to send some things that'll support her and the people she's working with there in New York City. Um, mm -hmm. Jess, I appreciate it. Thanks so much. We're so pleased to have you on staff. Thank you for bringing your gifts and your skills and your friendship to us at the Kirk. Um, it's been great talking to you and I hope to see you soon. Yeah, thanks for having me. You got it. Thanks so much. Talk to you later. Okay.